Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Program. I'm Jerry Horner and joining me today is J.B. Pertillo, fellow member of the Bella Vista Garden Club. She's a fellow Benton County Master Gardener. She's a Northwest Arkansas Master Naturalist, among many other things. And she's just been elected to the board of the Bella Vista Property Owners Association, so she'll be representing us as members. Well, actually, I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you. Thank Brilliant. you very much. You're going to do a great job for our members. And um, today we'll be talking about the new kids on the block. Now that, in other words, is new annuals hitting the market in 2021. But Jerry, I, I just hired the new kids on the block. Oh, the thing? Yeah. Oh, no, we got to do plants. You need to tell me about these yeah, things. Yeah, let's okay. just plant. I'm right. plantitis. Plant okay. It's plantitis. I'll try not to sink. Okay. Sing. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> But we'll also be talking about upcoming events and what you need to do in your garden in June, because June is a busy, busy month in our garden. So May is probably the busiest, but June's pretty busy. Yes. But first of all, I really want to, um, I'm, I'm so excited to say we have a new sponsor for our show. And uh, it's the Creeks Nursery. On, uh, what's the address on McNally? 8542 McNally Road. Yeah. It's got a Bentonville address, but it's, yeah, it's, it's ours. It's we claim them. Yeah, we claim it in yeah. Bella Vista. It's right down from Walgreens. Mm -hmm. Go down mm -hmm. the road there. Sure is. And they carry such a large supply of plants and trees and perennials, annuals, um, garden accessories. They have uh, some chemical products. And they, <clears throat> they do have some um, organic chemicals, too. Another, they have they offer really good delivery service oh, on yes. rocks and oh, bulk yes. gravel and Absolutely. things like that yeah, too. Bulk a lot mulch. Of, and all those stones out there. I mean, all you can just rocks. completely landscape everything with Absolutely. all those stones. Absolutely, they have every size, every they do. type. You know, they're they wonderful. Do. Now the owner, uh, George De Los Santos, he is just a great guy to work with. He's just wonderful, and the manager is Angie Warford. And she or her, any of her employees will help you find exactly what you need. They're just just so helpful. So they give know. us a discount, don't they, for the garden for club? the garden club members? They mm -hmm. get a ten percent discount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and it's wonderful. And that's on the on the stone, the bulk, and the delivery. Excellent. Unbelievable. Yes. They're just great, great people to work well, thank with. Thank you, Jerry, for getting so that. This I'm is just, the first time we've had a show sponsor. That's and I'm so excited. Oh, about and it. you're gonna hear so much more about Creeks right. Nursery. They mm -hmm. they uh, we highly recommend them. Yeah, they're wonderful. Anybody here in northwest Arkansas to stop by there and oh, take yeah. a look. It's Absolutely. gorgeous. It's beautiful. And you had, did you have a picture of that? Uh, I do have pictures, but, but more importantly, I want to let you know when they're open, because that's important. Yeah. Uh, they're open on Mondays through Saturdays from 8 to 5. They're closed on Sunday, mm -hmm. which is a little disappointing, because that's when well, I like to, They've got to rest, too. They have to yeah, rest. They have to rest. And you were talking about the farmer's market earlier. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they, they, not creeks, but there are plants at the farmer's market, too. Oh, there could yeah. be, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, that's the upcoming events. Um, yes. The Bella Vista Farmers Market, it's held on Sundays from 9 to 2, and it's moved to a new location. Mm -hmm. And it's in the parking lot of Village Center. And I don't think there's a sign that says Village Center, but it's 606 West Lancashire. Mm -hmm. And it's the same location as the Bluebird Shed and Duffers, so if you and know where that is. And the courthouse. And the courthouse is there yes. too now, yes. So if you know where that is, that's where you go. And they have fresh veggies and interesting items to sell. So you might find some plants there, too. You do, so, yes. But today we want to talk about the new varieties of plants that are released um, to the nursery trade after a long process of testing and propagating. So if you can imagine, uh, this takes a long time because first they have to develop the plant. Then they have to test it, and they send these, these plants out to bloggers or um, years ago when we went to the Master Gardener meetings and the annual meetings across the state. At the end of the meeting, Jana Carson would hand us a plant and we would grow it and get back to her later in the year and, and grade it. And I think that's how a lot of these new plants are tested. Mm -hmm. But they're tested by so many people across the country, you know, in nurseries and and I think they have specific gardeners they send them to. So after that, then they, after they decide that this plant's viable, then they have to propagate it. So they do tissue 
tissue propagation, which they could get, I don't know, maybe 500 plants out of one leaf, you know, but it's very, it's very technical. Mm -hmm. But it takes a long time to get them to market, so. And then the problem is getting them all across the country. Sometimes we won't get them in this area right away. We'll get some, but we may not get all. So you have to be patient. But these are some of the new ones that have just been released uh, for this year. And um, I got some pictures of some of these new ones. And Proven Winners is a big supplier of plants. You see that on their pots is Proven Winners. And I do have some here. This first one is a begonia. It's called Double Delight. And it is um, uh, called Blush Rose. So I don't know if it's going to show that or not. The blush rose is, is pink, and uh, it goes to a height of up to 14 inches and is spread up to 24. So there we go. That's There's the a blush picture. rose. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm, it is. And begonias are really popular. And it, that so one's many fragrant. Of fragrant. This I, one's fragrant. I didn't realize yeah. begonias were fragrant. Some are and some aren't. It okay. depends how they're bred. Mm -hmm. You know, and then. The next one in this in this Double Delight series is called Primrose, and um, looks like a Missouri Primrose. And then there's um, one called Double Up. The Double Up, um, uh, it's trademarked, is called a Double Up, and they're just the flowers are so thick and full. They're beautiful. But they have pink, they have red, uh, they have white. And this is all in that series. And they go to a height of 18 um, inches tall and a spread of 14. So they're a little bit more upright. And they're all award winners. They bloom continuously all year. Um, they, you don't have to deadhead these plants. Um, they take sun to part shade, or sun to part sun. And they like moist soil but not wet. They don't like their roots to be soggy. So, But they're great in hanging baskets and patio planters. So. And these are all annuals we're talking about. These are about. all annuals, Okay, right. because They're, when you get something really nice, you hope it comes up, but right. these won't. These are annuals. Well, they're zone 10, so I guess if you put them in your garage or try Inside. to winter over mm -hmm. them, I don't know, you could try it. Mm -hmm. So you can try greenhouse, that. Greenhouse if you have one? If you have a greenhouse, that would be great. You could probably, you know, keep them from year to year. Um, the next one is I'm going to talk about is the begonia maculata, the polka dot plant. This, this is baby. the polka dot plant right here. And this, um, this I bought it up at a um, box store. I just walked by and I thought, isn't that something? It's got polka dots all over the leaves. So I bought it and it, about a month ago, so it's growing and it looks like it's trailing. It's gonna be a trailing begonia. And it hasn't bloomed yet, but it probably blooms pink, I would think. And it looks like you put it in your garage and then painted your garage. Yeah, it looks like. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm a sloppy painter, and that's what it would look like. But it's pretty. It is. and um, It's from the it's Amazon, isn't set. it? Yeah, I think it's down in the, in the coastal areas mm -hmm. down there, yeah. But they develop a lot of polka dot plants this year. This is just one of them. I've, I've seen that polka dot plants are popular. So that's a new one, and I was lucky to get a new one. And then um, Calabracho. Are super bells. I'm just going to talk about the common names because some of the botanical names, you know, are hard to remember. Yes. So super and bells are really, really popular. And the super bells, um, this is the first one I have here. This is called Coral Sun. Oh, that's pretty. And isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. And it goes to a height of 12 inches, it spreads to 24. And then they also, now this one is from Proven Winners. And then this one is called Diva Hot Pink. Oh. Isn't that cute? Yes. And again, 12 to 24. And this is from Ball Seed. Now, when I went on the website to Ball Seed, I found over 100 varieties of super bells. Now, when you go to the nursery, you don't see that many super bells. <laughs> you know, so I'm sure the nurseries have a hard time you know, picking out which ones to sell, and and I know you'll find a couple varieties at the at the nurseries. But if you can imagine a hundred over a hundred different varieties, mm. so um, this one is uh, 
a, that's a basket with um, Diva Hot Pink. So you can put them in baskets or you can put them in the ground, whatever. And they're um, abundant petunia-like flowers. And then they have um, continuous bloomers and they're heat tolerant. They don't have to deadhead those, like some petunias you have to deadhead. And they attract these hummingbirds and butterflies. And it's sun to part shade. And that's what I like. You know I'm yeah. all about pollinators. Oh, yes. And feeding yes. the birds and the bees. And the, and the, and the super bells are great because they're small and they can, birds can get in there. Yeah. Okay, and then the next one we have is called a fan flower. Now, if you look at it, it looks like it's just a half a flower. Half oh, of it's missing. That's gorgeous. Isn't it something? Uh -huh. So fan flowers are getting really popular. And um, they grow to height at 14 and spread around 24. And this is curled whirlwind starlight. And that's what it looks like in a pot. Oh, that's Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. Yes. And see, a lot of the containers now, you're putting in two and three different plants, you know, for variety. I think just a container with one plant is just beautiful. I do, too. It's just striking. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a trailing plant. It needs full sun. It's drought tolerant. You don't have to deadhead. It's continuous bloom. And again, it attracts butterflies and, and uh, hummingbirds, mostly butterflies. Yeah. Okay, then the next one we have is um, impatience. Now everybody gets impatience, I think, in their garden, if they have any shade at all. And this one is a New Guinea impatient. And you know, with impatience, you either see white or pink or lavender, you know. But now they're coming out with these varieties that have, the, the flowers have two tones. You know, they have more interest in the flowers. Than and these just are more solid. shade plants, aren't they? These are absolute shade, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this one is called Blushing Crimson. And that does look like, it looks like it's beautiful crimson color. The thing I've noticed about impatient is that they need a lot of water. They do. So when it gets hot in the summer, yeah. I'm out there like giving them a drink of water yeah, constantly. They, they do like, uh, well, if you put some of those crystals in the soil when you plant them. Oh, that's right. Those water um, crystals, it, it holds the moisture and okay. you don't have to water as much. Okay. So, and you Good. can put that in the soil and the ground. Okay. Or you can put it in a pot so you can do And you can get way. those probably at creeks, can't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. And it is a mounding variety, and you don't have to deadhead, and it just blooms till frost. So uh, it's it's a great new impatient. And there is a double impatient that they've had for years. I always get double impatients that are pretty, too. Now this one is called a sweet potato vine. Now you know you have the purple ones and you have the green ones. This one is new. It's called Sweet Caroline Medusa. It's, it's uh, by Proven Winners. It's, it's in their Proven Accents um, category. And it gets a height of 12 inches. It'll spread to 30 inches because it's a long trailing uh, uh, vine. Could it be used as a ground cover? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can use it as a ground cover. Because I've always just used them draping and that, but ground cover, that's, yeah, that would be gorgeous. Yeah, and it just spreads. It'll go like 36 inches. Mm -hmm. It'll just spread all over. I had... I had one in my back bed, and it just almost took over the whole back bed. The <laughs> only problem I have with them is something bites on the leaves, and I don't know what it is. And I've never seen a bug on it, but mm. I've had that problem in my garden. Gotcha. So I don't know. Other people don't have that problem that I have. So, but it's it's a beautiful ground cover, and it lends sun to part shade, and it has that green with purple accents. So it's a little different than the normal green one. Okay, then the next one we have are petunias. Everybody puts petunias out, I think. I don't. Don't you? No. Oh, you don't like petunias? They're okay. Oh. <laughs> well, super petunias. Um, there's wave petunias that have been on the market for a while, and they just grow in, in large areas. Let me just preface that by saying I do perennials. I, I really don't do many, too many annuals, do but I'm going to try some of these. Oh, these are just, they add so much color to your garden. Especially you know? with the ground cover part. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like green mulch, so you don't have to put yeah, a lot of mulch down, right. and the weeds don't grow. And the weeds can't grow under. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this uh, wave petunias have been out for a while, but these super petunias... Uh, they're by Proven Winners also. They have a height of 12 to 14 inches uh, and then spread to 24. And they're, they're good for hanging baskets or, um, 
you know, because they trail. Mm -hmm. And the super tune. This is a new one for this year. It's called uh, Royal Velvet. Ooh. It does look like velvet. Oh, it does. It? Yeah. And then um, the one, look, the one I really like. It's these aren't new for this year, but the Picasso series. I love the Picasso series. Just the name grabs me anyway. But they have really, really spread these Picasso uh, petunias into so many different colors. This is the pink, Picasso pink. This is Picasso in blue. Mm -hmm. Now you don't find too many blue flowers. No, you don't. And I search them out because I yeah, love blue. Yeah, love blue. And you know, the edging on them is just, just makes them stand out. And then this is Picasso in purple. Which is like a fuchsia purple. That that would just be so striking in your garden. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. And then this new one I haven't seen before. This is Picasso in burgundy. So you can imagine when they're trying to propagate these new plants, when they see some of these things coming out in their test gardens, they just get really excited. I would get really excited if I saw <laughs> it. So. But this is a mounding and trailing. It's a mounding trailing, they call it, feature. It's full sun, continuous bloom to hard frost. It attracts butterflies. Um, it's heat and drought tolerant. This is a good one that's drought tolerant. Oh, good. Yeah, it is drought tolerant, but you still have to water it. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's, uh, you don't have to deadhead it. A lot of the petunias, you have to go and take the, the seed pot off, otherwise it quits blooming. And attracts hummingbirds and butterflies. And then, um, the more options, these aren't new either, but there's more, so many options for petunias now. It used to be you'd get pink or white, you know, and that's about it. And now, look at this one. Isn't that pretty? It's got like splotches. Oh, my goodness, yes. It's called Headliner Crystal Sky. And, um, you know, just kind of look in the, in the gardens, in these garden centers for different plants, you know, that you haven't seen before. And, Add them to your garden. And I think Proven Winners actually has pretty good signs, so you can pretty much tell if they're a Proven Winner well, or not. Well, it's on the pot. The yes, pot says exactly. Proven Winners. It does, yes. And there are, um, I'm not sure who all carries Proven Winners, but you may find them just about anywhere. Westwood does. I bet Creeks yeah. has some. I'm not sure if they're a supplier, but or we not. can find out. Okay. And I think Bradford carries them. Bradford would. Would carry them, mm -hmm. too. So um, just look for that on the pot. And then the other ones I found that I thought were interesting was this is called Headliner Dark Saturn. Yeah. Isn't that a beauty? It really is. So it's purple and... and uh, is that black? It's purple. It's, it's just so dark. It looks black. It's yeah. just dark purple. Yeah. And then the other one I really like is called Itsy Magenta. It just <laughs> is so bright. It's going to just brighten up any place in your garden. And these are spreading. These do, uh, these uh, petunias do spread. So, I mean, um, just look in your garden centers. Try to come up with something new instead of planting the same old things, you know, year after year. Yes. And then, um, you okay. know, just maybe ask your nurseries, um, you know, what they can get. And if they can get these new ones or if they can be a proven winner supplier. So... I don't know what that takes, but we could find out. Yes. Yes. So what do we do now in this month, Jerry? This month Yeah, is, what, what happens now? Well, um... With the annuals in particular, what happens? Well, well you've got to be planting and get your annuals in. Yes. You know, get, if it uh, stopped raining long enough, we well, could do that. Well, the thing is, I planted my annuals, and they're just sitting there because oh. we've had so much rain mm -hmm. and not enough sun. So, um... They're not going to take off until it gets a little warmer. It's been a very, very cool uh, spring mm -hmm. and wet. Mm -hmm. Now, that could mean a lot of mildew and, and mold and things on our plants. We'll get a lot of... Interesting new viruses. Yes, on the plants, not on us. <laughs> on a, no, oh, sorry. A, we don't need any new ones. <laughs> we don't need any for us. You're right. Um, but anyway, it's time to finish your planting and... Um, 
you know, your mulching. Make sure you get your mulching in. Well, you know, I do her, uh, herbs. I've been mm -hmm. hanging out with a lady who is British, and she says oh, herbs, herbs, but it's herbs because yeah. we're American, herbs. so we do that, right? Yeah, right. So at any rate, uh, if we haven't finished planting those, we need to get them in the ground. And right now, with all this rain, I'm having to pinch back the the seeds because mm -hmm. we don't want them to we just... We don't want a flower. No. no, no not herbs. No. no. I mean, I mean it, they look gorgeous, yeah. but oh, it, we've really got to um, do that. And... Um, June to July is the time to harvest usually. Garlic. Yes. Yes. That, garlic. The garlic that you planted last That's fall. October. Yes. yes. Speaking of garlic, they had some gorgeous garlic uh, at the farmer's market last oh, yeah? Sunday. Yes. Big, nice big ones. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention about all these annuals oh. is they are heavy feeders. If you don't fertilize probably every week or two, they're not going to produce because they're used to that fertilizing, you know, in the in the nurseries when they're propagated. So uh, annuals do take a lot of fertilizer to keep them blooming. So gotcha. just sure and fertilize, just like your roses. You have to fertilize your roses. Okay. What about bulbs? Bulbs, uh, spider lily and naked lady bulbs can be planted for fall bloom, and then um, remove your spring. I'm just about now removing my um, daffodil and and uh, tulip um, leaves. Not all the way. Well, they, they pretty much died back. Died back. Once yeah. they're yellow or brown, mm -hmm. you can cut them off. Yeah. And that has fed the, the bulb for next year. They'll have a flower next year. So right about now, they're starting to finally, you know, fade away and get brown. Um, and then um, the daylilies are going to be blooming soon. Well, at mine are. are you, have you got any I that have started? Buds, but no blooms. Oh, I've got, I've got several. You've got blooms? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's, you know, there's early bloomers and mid bloomers and late bloomers, the, uh, too. the yellow one, whatever that oh, the is. Stella Dora. Stella, Stella Dora. Dora. Yes. They're blooming everywhere. Yes. I see that. Yes. Yes. And then, um, so as soon as they bloom, they're going to bloom for one day. And then you just pinch them off. And I had one, one woman in the Daylily Club years ago. She would pick them at night because she knew that, you know, they'd be gone the next morning. Mm -hmm. So she'd pick them at night and take them in, enjoy them that evening. So... That's how you can deadhead them and enjoy them, too. Mm -hmm. So that's a good idea. And they're edible. Oh, I know. I was going to say, yeah. put them in your salad. Put them in your salads. Yeah, you know. they're great for that. Uh, and mums, you know, I, I always, a lot of people just buy mums uh, in the fall, mm -hmm. and then they just throw them away or whatever. Yeah. I don't. I oh, put I mine in the ground. Them. Yeah. Uh, and then now's the time that you want to... Well, they're starting to, to bud. Bud, yeah. We want to pinch them back, right? Yeah. So Take the buds off, mm -hmm. you know, cut Until them back. fall. Until, well, about well, the middle of July. The middle of July. Then, for, then, for a real bushy plant. Yeah, they'll be nice and, and then this, the, the critters lay down in the middle of it, of course, mm -hmm. and ruin it, but oh well. Yeah. Uh, but some people let them bloom, you know, early. Do they? And then they cut them back and they may bloom again. Okay. So some people do that too. Okay. So... And lawns, it's time to fertilize um, the Bermuda every 30 to 45 days. And then you want to mow um, and maintain height on your grass, uh, inch and a half to two inches. Mm -hmm. So it keeps it a little cooler for fescue. And then um, lawns require a deep watering. Once well, I a think week. we're getting that. And we're getting that. So, But <laughs> once, once that faucet's turned off. Yes. Yes. We're going to be in a drought. I we, know we will. Yes, it feels so, that way for but sure. But then you have to water once, at least an inch a week. That's so. right. That's right. And roses. Um, I haven't got too many roses left. Uh, this winter kill, this cold, cold winter, killed one of my climbers that went over my shed. So I'm starting over. It's grown up about this much mm. from the bottom, so I have to start over again. But the roses, you have to watch for the aphids and fungus. And um, I know Tony puts cornmeal yes, out does. around his roses, and that yes. helps with the black spot, and I do that too. And you have to deadhead them so they keep blooming. And then the climbers, you know, you would trim those after they bloom the first time. The other roses you would have trimmed like in February. But um, climbers you don't trim till after that first blush of burn. Yes. And then they also like a lot of fertilizer. They, you know, are heavy feeders if they're going to bloom, so... And be sure you have them watered before you fertilize. Don't put that fertilizer on dry roots because right. that, that could burn those roots up. Gotcha. Yeah. And, what and about the trees and the shrubs? 
Um, you can prune that. I'm doing a lot of pruning because I have a lot of dead um, things on my old shrubs that are like 24 years old. Mm. And this past winter was really hard on them. I've lost several large shrubs that have to be replaced. And um, I've had some where there's dead areas, you know. I kept waiting because Janet Carson said, wait till June mm -hmm. before you, you know, butcher your things, butcher your plants um, from this cold. So I waited till June, and now I'm having to cut out some dead things. You know, and a lot of people are talking about their crate murders. Uh, crate, crate murders, listen to me. <laughs> well, that's well, what that's, I hate when people what, do crate murder. Yeah, uh, but, trim them wrong. Right. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people lost a lot of those this year. Mine but all came back from the bottom. See, folks, so they came don't back. mess with them. The Let problem them now is you have all of these uh, starts Suckers, from the bottom. Yeah. And after probably this year, maybe next January, February, you have to selectively take out everything but like five or seven of those. You don't want 20, right. you know, stalks coming up. So you're going to have to do some uh, selective pruning in January. But don't but right now I have get a, rid of them. I have bushes. They're yeah. bushes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So this year they'll be bushes. Next year we'll, we'll start trimming them and get them back in That's shape. That's right. And... Um, Oh, I tell you Let's what, see. vegetables right now, I tell you, I'm oh. so worried about my tomatoes. They look green and lush, but, but it's too much rain. Too much rain. I don't see a lot of blooms. Do you put an umbrella over? <laughs> Do you, if I it rains too much? I see you out there holding an umbrella well, over Well, I mean, you, get, you can get one of those big... Do you really? Do you well, do you that? Could, could, you could. All right, Jerry, you're, yeah. you're a great gardener. I'll try that. Because, you know, that... All that water's not good for them. Oh, it's They're going to be splitting, and they're just going to mm -hmm. rot away. That's a good idea. But a big if golf you umbrella can, or something. puts a cover over them when okay. it rains really hard, it'll protect them a little bit. Okay. Because I was worried about Some people just that. put up, like, um, stakes, and then some kind of that uh, cover you, you put shade on your cloth. shade cloth, mm -hmm. and put that over them just to protect them a little bit. Okay. So... But you you grow more vegetables than I do. I oh, I, I do, vegetables. and my my oh the beans. Oh my goodness, oh, the they're beans. like they're amazing because I have like a, 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 a TP mm -hmm. going on, and then I have I finally found some of those purple. Uh, oh, I can't never remember the name of them, but they're gorgeous bloomers, and they're coming up over the side of oh. the the fence, and the beans are edible. But they're also great hummingbird, and you know oh, yeah. that's where yeah. my heart is yeah. taking care of those critters. Yeah. The hummingbirds things. have been pretty busy. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, everything looks good. Yeah. I just I'm worried about my tomatoes. Yeah. So, okay, so, so but we want to enjoy to, it, don't yeah, we? You want to enjoy the garden. You yeah. want to sit there and you know not work all the time. You want to enjoy just sitting there and looking at your garden and watching your little critters running around. I so. saw a little bitty bunny yesterday. So Aww. cute. I love bunnies. They don't eat too much either. Not like those um, um, deer. Yeah. Deer eat too much. So if any questions about gardening, um, remember you can go to the um, Bella Vista Garden Club website. They got a lot of information. And the Master Gardener website yes. has a lot of information too. And so. even the Master Naturalist website. And the Master Naturalist, yes. Yeah. We're going to have to start including them you on, are. in our program. Yes. So, because they're it's so important to keep things natural. It really is. It's very important. Yes. And so, if you want more information about the Garden Club, they got their website is bellavistagardenclub.com. And we're going to resume our meetings in September. So we'll finally get to meet in person. Finally. And just miss seeing everybody. Um, it's just not the same as, you know, Zooms are okay, but it's just not the same. Could I say a few more words about Creeks? Absolutely. You know, they have, gr have a great selection, and the service is in impeccable. Yeah, it's, it wonderful. Is. it's wonderful. So I highly recommend anybody in the Northwest Arkansas mm -hmm. area. I think they've actually won some awards for being one of the best in the area. Oh, that best. Uh, on, out on their website. Yeah. It's creeksnursery.org, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and a great selection, very knowledgeable. Um, their landscaping team is excellent from what I hear. So, they are. Well, it's just another company. Yes. It's a separate company yes. other than the nursery, but it's tied together. Yes. So um, So let's build something hard, together. It's creeks. hard sometimes to recommend. People ask us about recommendations I for know. landscaping. Yes. And I don't hesitate in recommending them. That's I right. don't. Because some of the others are... You know, it could be fly-by-night, and they just don't do a good job, or yes. they never call you back. 
So um, I highly recommend them too. Absolutely. So great. So JB, thank you for joining me today. You bet. And sharing all this information. You it's always, always fun have, to talk with oh, you. Oh yes, I love to talk gardening. I love it. <laughs> so and I hope you've enjoyed the program. And we'll tune in again next month. And until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. Mm -hmm.